Gustavo Frank, Blue Math, the whole thing is off the map nuts. I had to be wearing a tinfoil hat, you know. Seth can't seem to wrap my mind around this one little thing. What are Gustavo Frank's fingerprints doing in Gil Bedecker's part? Hank Schrader is a character who experiences a transformational change within the Breaking Bad storyline, in which he ceases to be controlled by external appearances and instead shifts his focus towards the internal idea. A person who is focused on external appearances often makes choices and decisions to uphold good standing with others. This type of person can often neglect their own inner world due to the need to present a certain way to others in family, work, and social life. Someone who is focused on the internal idea, on the other hand, is a person who is more concerned with their internal world. This person may neglect or minimize the importance of the outside world and the people they surround themselves with in favor of the dominating idea that lives within. In this video, I will examine the ways that Hank begins the series as someone who is consumed by external appearances, but that a number of major life events eventually cause him to shift his focus to the internal idea. With this information in mind, let's get into the analysis. In season one, we get early examples of how Hank is initially presented as a character whose life is ruled by external appearances. When Hank is investigating evidence from the cook site in the desert, he goes to visit Walt after learning that the equipment has come from the high school chemistry lab. There are several times in their interactions in which Hank could look closer at Walt and his possible involvement in the crime. But Hank is someone who often focuses on information that is more in line with prejudgments or stereotypes. He often neglects going down unknown paths in order to remain on those that are well-worn. So he ends up looking past Walt and instead arrests the janitor since he has a history of drug use on his record. Everyone else at the school seems to be convinced by these facts as well as it is often easier to convict the person who fits the model of the criminal. Early in season two, we see Hank engaging in similar acts when he is informing the other DEA agents that Tuco is the prime suspect in the blue meth case. As he is describing Tuco, we get the impression that he could be talking about anyone. He's talking about a type of person, someone who fits the role of a drug dealer or a distributor. It's as if Hank has been conditioned or programmed through years of DEA service to think this way and to look at things from a very specific angle. This angle makes it so that he has a very clear picture of the criminal before he really knows the truth of the situation. At the same time, this opinion allows Hank to easily fit in with the crowd, where he doesn't stick out by presenting ideas that are contrary to those of others. He soon riles up the other agents and convinces them that this is the guy they want and that he will be apprehended. When he is leaving the room with Gomez, he says, I ain't gonna find him. The guy's in Mexico by now. Appearances, Gomi. It's all about appearances. Indicating not only Hank's inability to see past the appearances of others, but also his need to uphold appearances with people in his own life. Then, a few episodes later, Hank has just been promoted to a higher position within the DEA and he is acting as if everything is fine, seemingly excited to go to El Paso. But when he gets on the elevator by himself, he begins having what appears to be a panic attack, and we soon come to realize that he is suffering from traumatic stress due to his shootout with Tuco several episodes back. Throughout the episode, Hank attempts to deal with the trauma by avoiding work and drinking alcohol. We then see a similar occurrence in the 8th episode of the season, in which Hank is still dealing with symptoms of PTSD, spending most of his time in bed and not wanting to leave the house. He has another panic attack in the elevator when he is heading into work, but when he arrives at the office, he puts on a happy face and acts as if everything is fine. Hank wants to appear okay to the outer world because he is often focused on the approval of others and being perceived as confident, cool, and collected to everyone around him. He is greatly concerned about his career and moving up in the ranks, being seen as a leader and a badass, but on the inside he is scared and overwhelmed by recent events as he is dealing with intense inner turmoil. Hank is neglecting what is going on within him as the need to conform to appearances often takes precedence in his life. 
Then, in Season 3, Hank has been avoiding going back to El Paso primarily due to his trauma symptoms and his inability to deal with emotions and memories of past events. He is actively trying to avoid situations that trigger his trauma. What makes things harder for Hank is that he has conceptions of what it means to be a police officer, a husband, and a man in general, none of which coincide with expressing emotions and talking about recent traumas. So instead of damaging the appearance of himself, he goes through the process of avoidance. One way this happens is when he goes to a local dive bar with Gomez. Hank attempts to pick a fight with some rough looking locals in further attempts to avoid being reassigned to El Paso. When Gomez questions him and tries to get to the bottom of things, he asks Hank, What is up with you lately? Starting bar fights? Turning down El Paso? And now this bullshit? Didn't you talk to someone or what? Hank completely changes in his mood and becomes highly defensive, telling Gomez to take his hand off his shoulder. We see Hank acting in a similar way to Marie at this time, in which he becomes very distant and cold with her when all she wants to do is help. Although the two closest people in his life are reaching out with helping hands, Hank can't bear to let them see through his tough exterior, and so instead chooses to shut them off. But eventually, Hank can't keep his emotions hidden any longer, and after he is deceived by Walt and Jesse into thinking Marie was hospitalized, he goes to Jesse's house and beats him senseless. In these scenes, we see the ways that he is disassociating from himself. Soon after, he breaks down and tells Marie about the ways he has changed since the shootout with Tuco. He seems to be ready to recognize the ways that he has been impacted within while also attempting to let go of the need to appear put together to those who know him. He is recognizing the importance of the internal truth over the external facade. And although Hank seems to have been primarily focused on external appearances throughout the first several seasons of the show, we see the ways that his attitude begins to shift after he is attacked by the Salamanca twins and is needing to recover from his injuries. We see Hank struggle at this time as he doesn't want to reveal his pain and weakness to the world around him. Due to this wish, he tries his hardest to hide from life by delaying his exit from the hospital, staying in bed, and becoming obsessed with purchasing crystals. He is finding as many excuses and distractions as he can to not come to the reality that he is a vulnerable person, that he is no longer someone who can put on a tough exterior attitude and act like everything is fine. As this struggle continues, he also seems to have given up on being a DEA agent or attempting to locate the dealer of the blue meth. But one night, Walt gets too drunk when his family is over at Hank and Marie's, and his statements make Hank start to question the conclusions he has come to regarding the case. We soon see him diving back into the files he had put to the side, looking for new details. As Hank no longer has the ability to live in the world of appearances, as all that he has built up over the years has come crashing down, he now instead has the opportunity to turn towards the internal idea, as he is no longer preoccupied with his image and the perceptions others hold of him, he can now be led by chance hunches and intuitions. Later in season 4, Hank seems to be doing much better mentally, while also recovering from his injuries, as he is going out to eat with a walker and performing tasks independently, he goes to meet with his former chief and Gomez to present a new idea about the meth case, and Hank seems like a changed person. He is presenting fascinating links in the case and focusing on details and connections that were never considered before. It seems that the isolation caused by the injury has caused him to pursue his internal idea with great force. He is recognizing that value from work can also come from within and it is not dependent on external factors. A few episodes later, Hank has started inquiring about Gus's connection with the meth operation and has been taking Walt along for stakeouts. When Hank says he wants to check out the laundromat since it is owned by a magical company, Walt says, Sounds like a real shot in the dark there. No, it just, it just sounds kind of thin. And although this is something which would have deterred Hank in the past, he is instead following paths which are not as well defined to the outside world, but seem more assured to himself due to the ability to follow his internal idea. In addition, Hank could also have been halted by the eventual car crash that Walt causes, 
but instead he says that he is going to buy a car that he can use with his handicap. Rather than allowing adversity and roadblocks to stop him in his path, Hank is now pushing through barriers and finding a way to make it work. Perhaps he would not have had the motivation if he had been more concerned with external appearances, but now that he is following an inner truth, it is much easier to work through the difficulties to reach his goals. In the next episode, when Hank is trying to get Gomez to investigate the laundromat, Gomez is pushing back and saying that he can't make decisions on conjecture alone. But Hank goads him on and says that Gomez is paying too much attention to the rules and the establishment. Hank used to be like Gomez, paying attention to policies and protocols, concerning himself with conforming to the norms. But he now realizes that being concerned with maintaining appearances often gets in the way and leads to dead ends whereas listening to himself is giving him energy and direction. When Hank finally realizes that Walt is Heisenberg after seeing the inscription in the Walt Whitman book, he goes back to his home and asks his agents to supply all the files from the blue meth case. He begins to wildly reorganize everything and refigure the case with the new information in mind. The last thing on his mind at this point is his job, his career, or what others think about him. Even when the agents come by, he dismisses them quickly, barely even acknowledging them. He is completely absorbed in his own world and idea at this point, allowing the case to take him where it may, instead of presupposing he has the answers in hand. In the following episode, Marie is trying to persuade Hank to go to the DEA and inform them that Walt is Heisenberg. But Hank is realizing that if he goes to the DEA, his career will be over because it will be evident that Walt was under his nose the entire time. The irony of the situation is a result of Hank's changing psychology over time, and that for much of Hank's life, he was too concerned with outer appearances and how he seemed to others that he never wanted to divert from the status quo, something that also caused him to neglect looking past the appearances of others and consider what might be going on under the surface of those around him. But in the latter parts of the show, when he puts less focus on how others are perceiving him, it also gives him the ability to look closer and deeper at the world around him, including with Walt. The problem that has occurred as a result is that although his internal idea has led him to the truth, this truth is not compatible with what it takes to keep up appearances with the DEA. It's almost as if these two worlds cannot exist alongside each other. Hank could never be the person who maintained appearances while also looking closer at details, because eventually that closer inspection would cause the world of appearances to unravel before his eyes. Then, in the last episode in which Hank appears, he has gone completely rogue and is only paying attention to his inner idea, completely dismissing his appearance to others, emphasized by his choice to secretly work with Jesse, who is a prime suspect in the case. At one point, we see him at Huell's house, attempting to trick him so that they can locate Walt's stash of money. This tactic works, eventually leading Hank to Walt and his money before Hank puts the cuffs on Walt's hands. Throughout the final parts of the series, we see the ways that Hank is energized and fueled by his own internal idea, while making choices that no longer worked within the world he was formerly so enmeshed within. Unfortunately, Jack and his crew soon come to the scene and kill Hank for being a DEA agent. But until his final breath, Hank was able to stay committed to his values and standards, pursuing his vision of truth and justice no matter what. It seems that these were values Hank always strived for while working with the DEA, but they were always just outside of his grasp. It wasn't until he forged his own way towards that path through his internal idea that those abstracted virtues became a living reality for Hank. This concludes this installment on the psychology of Breaking Bad. Please watch my other videos on other TV and film characters if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.